let's talk about how you can add a second camera to your live streams. Are you looking to improve the quality of your live streams and find a way to have a more dynamic and professional live stream that's gonna capture and hold people's attention? Well, adding an additional camera, maybe even two, is a great way to do just that. And that's what we're gonna be talking about here on today's show. So I'm very excited to, that, to do that. So let's dive on in. Hello and welcome. My name is Nick Polkuski. And uh, on this show, we cover everything about how to improve your live video production. So we talk about things like gear, techniques, uh, tips, and strategies for live video production, but it's all focused on how you can have a higher quality live stream in, uh, in your business, in your world, in order to help improve that. So I'm very excited to be talking about all of this. And this show is brought to you in partnership with be live so be sure to go learn more about them by heading over to nickpolkuski.com slash be live you can use that little code there in order to get an additional discount if you're interested in uh, learning more about be live but uh to kind of kick things off um i am already on my second cup of coffee here uh, and i want to know what is your favorite morning beverage so i want to know what your favorite morning beverage is it coffee uh, is it tea? Is it sparkling water? What is it? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from, from you all. And uh, the reason I am on my second cup of coffee already is because we just wrapped up a really big uh, live event um, for a client where it was multiple days uh, going live. Uh, we've been live for, I think, almost two weeks, about eight days or 10 days now. Um, and, I'm very, and I learned a lot. It was a multiple streams going on at once, uh, multiple tracks, and definitely learned a lot. Uh, put it, and we built out a studio for them and I wrote down a lot of takeaways, which I'm really excited about to start talking about and using here in some future episodes. So really kind of a bonus here, extra question. I know I see some comments rolling in already from our previous question here, but a bonus question is what are, do you want to know uh, from that experience. Like I said, I wrote down a few takeaways that I'm going to be using in future episodes. But I want to know from you, uh, what things are you interested in learning about live video quality? I'm going to be going through all the comments afterwards. So even if you're watching this later, just definitely leave a comment. Uh, let me know what topics around live video production do you want to learn? Um, love to hear from that. So we've got a few things coming in. Um, higher, Nancy says higher quality live streams is a good thing. I completely agree. Uh, we got some water fans. Awesome, awesome. Cold water and then hot coffee is another one. I'm I'm definitely in that camp as well. Um, I also have for the show my little sparkling water ready to go just in case. Uh, and Chris says, Chris says it's coffee. Awesome, love to hear that. Uh, but yeah, keep your comments coming. I love love to hear what everybody is drinking in the morning. Um, let's dive in and talk a little bit about how to add those extra cameras. We're gonna go at this in a few different ways, um, starting, starting generally the most easy and accessible to people, but then continue to talk through a few different options that you have. Um, I have five different options here that you can use in order to uh, add multiple cameras to your stream, going up in professionalism and quality. And then with each of them, I'm also gonna go ahead and add uh, and add a little technique and in a way you can actually use those um, different placements of the camera and all things like that. So I'm excited to dive in and talk about that. So let's jump in. And the very first one is talking about adding a second webcam. Um, so this is going to be the easiest for most people. Uh, you're generally going to be going live on one webcam, maybe directly from your computer. Again, always think about framing. So uh, if you're going from your laptop webcam, for example, be sure to try and get that up and proper frames right so it's at about eye level so that your head's towards the top of the frame so it's you know close enough uh where you kind of fill the box but not too close where you're you know it should be something similar to this so you have a little room on the edges um and have about this depth is kind of the ideal situation you're not always going to be able to do that right away but uh find ways to kind of get towards uh that type of framing now when you're looking to add an additional camera uh you can add something like a plug-in, a USB webcam. So this is just the Logitech C920. Um, it, this one's super old. I've had it for several years now. Uh, still runs, still works great. Um, you can find some of them out there, but there are a lot of other really great high quality webcams. Um, this is likely something many people are gonna be able to have access to. They're generally a little cheaper than some of the other options we're gonna talk about. 
Um, so this is a great way, just plugging in that second webcam. Uh, and then what you can do with this is, especially in a software like BeLive, you can actually go ahead and bring in your second webcam and you can you know adjust kind of the layouts or you can even hide this one here. And then you can kind of uh, adjust things to make, again, create that dynamic, more dynamic live stream. So I like the idea of having this webcam um, up as your uh, one great way, one great thing that you can do with something like a webcam because it has generally a longer cable. Um, you can kind of put it in some unique positions. Sorry, I'm shaking all over the place. I just realized. Um, but you can use it as a top down camera. So if you have one an event or run a show, where you need to display things to people, you, you know, you need to talk about gear, talk about equipment, or you just want to have kind of a unique top-down shot, maybe you need, you're talking about tech or something like that, you can have this webcam hooked up in a way where you can easy uh, go ahead and easy, um, uh, I'm seeing some comments about crazy sound, sorry about that, we're going to make some quick adjustments. I'm trying not to attach all of the cameras right away. Thank you. Thank you for the comments about the sound. <laughs> uh, make some adjustments there. I'll remember to mute that from now on. Um, but using a top-down camera like this could be a great way to add that dynamic element. And then, of course, there are going to be several other ways you can add this camera to your live stream um, or add a second webcam to your live stream. And we'll continue to talk through some other placements that I like to do for those second cameras. Now, what are we going to talk about next? Well, the next one is, again, going to be kind of using your webcam, uh, using whatever is attached to your computer, but then adding in, say, a phone. Uh, and that can be a great way because it can add a lot of extra dynamic elements to your live stream. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to adding that extra element here with the phone. We're going to make sure this mic is muted. Um, but in last week's episode, we talked about adding in using an app on your phone called Epoch Cam. So this is exactly what we're doing here. We're using Epoch Cam on this phone. Uh, and then I still have my normal webcam uh, where I'm talking directly to my camera. And you're able to add in this extra camera just with your phone. And because Ep Epoch Cam especially allows you to connect wirelessly to your computer, a great way, a great thing you can do with this phone is say have that kind of behind the scenes shot where maybe it's mounted over in the back, in the back corner, and then people can kind of see you working at your desk. You have kind of that behind the scenes shot. Um, another thing I have done with this one that is really cool is to actually go ahead and use it as a to go ahead and put it as on a slider, a motorized slider that is just going back and forth. Um, so it can be kind of that second camera angle, maybe off in the distance a little bit, but it is slowly, ever so slowly just traveling. It adds a nice little extra dynamic to your stream that's gonna keep people engaged, just kind of adds that cool little shot, especially when you frame things correctly. You can just have it slowly moving uh, back and forth on a looping, Again, that's going to require extra gear, but it's a really cool way to use that second camera and add in that extra dynamic piece. Now, another one you can do here, and I just realized that uh, the battery on this camera died, so I'm not going to be able to show you the angle from this camera. Um, but a really neat thing that you can do nowadays is bring in your DSLR camera. Several different ways to do this, but we're going to talk specifically using the DSLR uh, USB web camera. So M50 here is just plugged in directly by a USB. They have a micro USB here because it's the older version and it's plugged in directly to the computer and using a software that um, Canon has. It's the EOS webcam utility software. You got to download it onto your computer. Uh, it's a free software. Um, many other makes and models of DSLRs have that as well. So you're likely to be able to find a Sony one. I think Panasonic has one. So depending on the kind of camera you have, there's likely an app that's going to allow you to plug directly in and use your DSLR as a webcam. Really awesome. It gives you some great looking images. 
Um, what you're going to end up seeing with that one is you'll actually, it will be slightly downgraded video. It's going to only, I believe, I believe it is only 720 on Canon, for example. Some of the others are a little different. Um, but it's still going to be much higher quality than most of the webcams that you get out there just because of the sensor size, because you can add different types of glass to it, just because of the look you're going to be able to get with a properly dialed in webcam like this. Like this, it's going to work and look amazing. So that is another really cool element you can do. And what I would like to do, uh, what I'd suggest with something like that is to use it as, say, a close-up cam. We're going to jump back and use this one. So this is not but you can use it as a close-up cam. Like I said, this one died on me, so we can't show what the DSLR camera looks like uh, because I apparently forgot to charge the batteries. But so you could use it as a close-up cam to do some close-up shots to kind of show things close up, show people how you use something like that um, and get some of those neat, cool little things. It could be something that you move around, but it could also be just straight um, station to the desk where you can easily show those close-up images uh, to people, uh, depending on what you're talking about, especially if you're reviewing gear or anything like that. And of course, all of these cameras can be used in any configuration I mentioned. You'll likely find ones that work even better for you. So that is an example of what you can do with that, um, with that USB, that DSL, DSLR USB webcam. I'm going to highly suggest if you don't have a really nice camera that if you do jump into the web to the DSLRs, look at, say, something like if you're just getting started, want a really great starter camera. Um, again, not necessarily cheap, but I highly recommend the brand new M50s. This is Mark II. Um, you could, if you know you're only going to be using um, the USB feature, you can find some pretty cheap um Mark ones, which this is, it's fair. It's been around for a while. Uh, you can find used ones fairly cheap right now. So you might want to even look at that if you know you're not going to be using a capture card. Um, if you're not using a capture card, this is going to be a great camera for just plugging directly in USB and something I highly recommend people check out if that's the route you want to go. All right, let's see what we have for comments. I know I kind of ran through a lot right now. Nice. Uh, I see Molly is setting up a brand new face cam right now. Awesome. Great to hear. <laughs> and she likes the all up in your face framing. All right. I'm running through a few, few of your comments. Cool. Saw the, the, can you please place the app? Chris, I think you're talking about this app. This is not a direct link, but it is the Epoch cam from El Elgato. It's not a direct link, but hopefully you can see that. It's Epoch cam from Elgato. Um, so be sure to go check that out. I can grab, I'll grab the actual link to that. Again, that's one I really highly, highly recommend. really love that, that app. Um, you can plug it in directly uh, just by a lightning cable and to USB and directly into your computer, or you can go wireless, which is awesome. Again, you need a strong Wi-Fi signal, but for, I've, this has been pretty rock solid. I haven't had it fail. I mean, sometimes that was an issue with other apps in the past, but this one has been very rock solid. All right, let's move on then to our next, our next way to add in that second camera. And that really comes in where you're talking about adding in, again, a DSLR camera, but this time instead of using, uh, instead of using the USB, you're gonna jump in quality because you're gonna use something like a, a single capture card. So something like a Mageable capture card. I dove into this also a bunch in last week's episode when talking about different ways to connect your phone. Um, but what that is going to allow you to, to do is to actually plug in your camera via HDMI. So something again like, like this, but again, you'd want version two, and I'll explain why in a second. Um, but you would basically plug in your HDMI cable right into there. And then you need a device. You can't plug that HDMI cable directly into your computer and bring it in as a web camera. It doesn't work that way. Um, you need to have a capture card, which is basically a device that converts the signal so that your computer reads it as a camera, as a camera source, as that webcam. Um, and Magewell is a brand that I really like. Blackmagic also has 
um, their Ultra Studio monitor, which is a, a fairly decent option. Elgato, um, who makes Epoch Cam, they have some great options. Highly recommend if um, you're looking for another brand that it's going to help add quality to your streaming, just go check out some of the Elgato products. They're a great company. They um, make a lot of really high quality products and just announced a lot of brand new things, um, brand new gear that you might be want, you might be very interested in. Um, so I'm going to probably be talking about them a lot more uh, here in the future on future episodes because of some of the stuff that they have. Um, yep. And so Chris is even mentioning the Stream Deck, which I have the old Stream Deck here. Um, they just released a new one. Um, but yeah, I love the Stream Deck. So that's another Elgato product. Um, not, to talk, not to talk too much about them, but highly recommend that company. So go check that out. They make, again, capture cards, but Magewell also makes some really high quality HDMI capture cards that those are the, probably the two companies I would look if you're looking for just a single capture card. But now I like to always plan things ahead. So if you know you want to start building out your production studio, um, you might want to consider what is kind of that ultimate level of production that I want. How many inputs do I am I going to need? Am I going to be running more than two cameras? Am I going to be wanting to bring in extra computer screens or have different way of bringing in an iPad screen or whatever, something like that. Well, at that point, you're going to want to look for something like the eight. You're going to want to look for something that can take multiple HDMI inputs. Um, so you're going to be looking at something like the ATEM Mini Pro. That's really what I would recommend. Um, I really like the ATEM Mini. Um, I go with the Pro version because that is going to allow you to uh, to be able to see a few different extra screens and things that works well for me. There are several other options that vary in price, um, but I tend to use the pro version. So let's take a look at what that is. I already kind of gave you a sneak peek at that, but here is the ATEM Mini Pro. So that's what this is right here. Um, and what you're gonna notice, let's hide this so you can see it a little better. What you're gonna notice is that there are these four different buttons right along here. These are four separate HDMI inputs. So I can plug different cameras in. I could have multiple cameras. Like say you want to have, for example, a comment camera. So when you're reading comments, you look directly into the camera. Well, that could be a quick switch. And then you could be talking to your comment camera uh, and reading the comments going through. Um, this is really a great technique that I like. So it's an easy way. So I have second screen right here that will normally have all of the comments up on it. And you just kind of read through those comments, engage with, with your audience that way. But then when you are ready to switch back, you hit that button and you are back looking directly at your main camera with your main framing kind of set up there. Um, it also takes some audio inputs so you can have audio route through there. And it does a lot of really cool things. Um, so this is something that I highly recommend um, if people are interested and go and know they want to continue to build and build and build their studio out. Um, so for me, I don't necessarily have all these used right now, especially for today's show. Um, I have, you, you might've saw all the HDMI cables plugged in. And actually I should probably give you a quick little show of what everything kind of looks like. So let's get here. All right. So I have several different HDMI cables in here. So these are the four inputs. Input one, which is right here, is my comment camera. So I'm looking directly at the camera right now. Um, and you can see all the different inputs right here as well. This is um, the screen that I have that is kind of running through. Uh, and you can see there has a preview window and then the four camera inputs down on the bottom. That's what's nice about the Pro. It gives you that that breakdown you can see that and still have a different output to your live streams and then what i have usually for right here right down here i have input number two uh you can see another hdmi cable going there let's take a look at what that is that is um that is kind of that main screen here um so i'm gonna, I'm gonna flip these around you're gonna see kind of the infinite screens but i have over here have just a second computer monitor set up uh, and I, anything I want to show, say on screen, I have on this one, it's a blank desktop, a little nice gray background. So I can place any item, any web page, any document, anything like that on this monitor right here. Again, you're going to notice the, cam the 
comments camera is right up there. So when I switch to the comment camera, that's right up there. So I can see all the comments right here um, and be able to do that. And you can see all of that right there. Um, so it's just a really neat way to add a lot of those extra elements. Um, and I have a couple other inputs. And one of them is obviously the main camera here. Uh, and then that third input, I actually have, sometimes I'll bring in a second computer if I need a different computer for whatever reason. But a lot of times that will be an input for either an iPad directly showing the screen of the iPad or for so showing my phone as a direct input, the screen of my phone. So I can be scrolling, say, through Instagram or showcasing an app and I want to show all the settings. I can do that by plugging in uh, directly to the ATEM. All right, so let's jump in and look of, at a few questions. I definitely want to take time for your questions. So if you have any questions, leave, in, leave them in the comments. Let me know. We're going to jump in and answer as many as I can here um, for all of you. So let's take a look here. Yeah, Elgato and Molly uh, is talking about Elgato. Um, has an amazing uh, phone support, which totally surprised me. Yeah, Elgato is just an amazing company, honestly. Like, I'm really happy with their com that company. So it's really great to see. Um, she's also asking, what's the difference in using a Stream Deck? What's the difference between using a Stream Deck and the ATEM Mini Pro? Excellent question. So with the, with the Stream Deck, really what you're doing is, and, I, and you might have noticed there's nothing plugged in right now on this. I actually use the Stream Deck a lot of times when I'm not streaming because I will be using it, use it with, say, editing. A Stream Deck really, what that allows you to do is to create a bunch of shortcuts. Uh, and they could be multiple action shortcuts. They could be different things like that. So, for example, um, this last week when I was running kind of that client event, uh, we had different camera inputs set up um, where I could use the, the Stream Deck because we had some different camera layouts. So we were using cameras, being able to switch to there, but the Stream Deck is not a capture card. Purely what the Stream Deck will do is switch between different things or bring up different actions. Um, you can have a Stream Deck button for a lower third. So I could bring that across, um, bring in that lower third, bring in a certain setup. I had it set up so that it would mute and unmute uh, microphones. So with the audio interface, it didn't even necessarily need to go through a streaming. It would didn't need to go through a streaming software, but it also could go through a higher end streaming software. I'll use the Stream Deck um, to bring up certain calendars. It's kind of amazing the amount of different things that you can do for the Stream Deck. What the difference is between that and say like the ATEM Mini Pro is the ATEM um, Mini Pro is actually a capture card. Uh, right now, that ATEM is plugged in um, via USB-C into the computer, into my computer, and is that's what's allowing me to bring in multiple different cameras. I do think I think we're going to have to go through an entire show just on something like the ATEM um, and and talk about what that does, and probably maybe even talk about how you can incorporate a Stream Deck. I think those are going to end up being two completely separate shows. Uh, I think it might be helpful to go through some of that because honestly, yeah, it's, they're cool. They're awesome. Um, but they can, and they can be used in so many different ways. Both of them can be used in so many different ways in a live stream setup. All right, let's see what we have. Yeah, exactly. So Molly is talking a little bit about how she uses uh, Stream Deck more for productivity things, but haven't ever been able to use it for cameras and actions for be live so this is awesome yeah we should definitely uh talk a little bit about that um and deal if you buy one now uh i, I will help walk you through it I'll, i will help walk you through it we'll, we'll do a show maybe we can bring you on a show and talk walk you through setting it all up we, we'll find a way to incorporate that um but i'm definitely checking in see if there are any more comments coming in from people who want to know uh have any more questions but with that, we're going to kind of wrap this show up. I want, I do want to recommend, first, I want to kind of have that disclaimer that I always do in every one of these episodes is the biggest thing I want you to do with live streaming is to start. Get started, get going, get on camera, grab your phone and the Be Live mobile app and go live from your phone. That's all you need to get started or go live from your computer using your laptop built-in webcam. 
that's all you need to get started. You're going to learn so much in those first few days, just going live, just getting used to it. So that's where I want you to start. But as you grow, uh, as you get more comfortable, start adding in those little extra elements, start adding in those extra camera angles, start adding in those additional camera pieces and things like lower thirds. And that's really what this is all about is getting you comfortable uh, with going live and then slowly improving the quality over time. Don't think you're gonna jump right there right away, um, but slowly work to improve that quality. I think that's gonna be the best way. And if you wanna learn more about tech and learn, dive into some more of these topics, be sure to head on over to my YouTube channel. I'm releasing videos all the time, uh, every single week. And you can find that by going over to nickwalkowski.com slash YouTube jump on the channel and be sure to tune in next week here. We're going live again. Uh, and I'm very excited uh, about next week and we're going to dive in. I might actually be adjusting the topic, so I'm not going to announce what that is, but be sure to subscribe to be live here. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Be sure to get notifications so you don't miss next week's episode because I know it's going to be a good one. And I'll see you in the next one.